Nerd Soul. Lay ill kid at one youngster holding down, bring that street geek and nerd soul. Man, it has been a long time. So like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell. Let's go because we talking about Star to the Trizac. And we ain't by ourselves. We got the one and only. Alright. The uh wizard in the wizard's top. I give to you, Solar Greg. What's up? Hey everybody, what's going on? This is Solar Gray, the Cinematic Sorcerer, and man, it's good to be back. I I have discovered a few things that I would like to discuss with you, my friend, about <laughs> our trek mm -hmm. through the star-studded property that you and I both grew up on. Man, oh man. Look, you know what? Season five is here. We got three episodes. Let me know how you feel. How are you feeling about these new episodes? This is the final season. You know, we ain't going to see them no more. Well, maybe not for a long time. So how are you feeling about season seven? I mean, season five coming off the jump. So I want to preface this with I, I talk about the Star Trek franchise curse all the time. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, whenever there's a new Star Trek show, it takes a season or two for it to find its footing. Okay. Okay. It happened with The Next Generation. It happened with Deep Space Nine, but with Deep Space Nine, it was only one season. Like that first season was a little rocky. Then they let Avery Brooks shave his head and grow his goatee. And then we're like, oh, okay. All right. That, that's where we going. <laughs> you know, it happened with Voyager. And I think it was season three that Voyager really caught its footing. You know, same with Enterprise, even Picard took two seasons for people to care mm. and then season three picard was like all right i think the only show from star trek that has hit the ground running just just hit the ground going whoa all right i'm all in has been strange new worlds and the smaller properties like prodigy um lower decks stuff like that mm -hmm. um and discovery tripped hard on that first season I don't know what it was. It might be a correlation between Star Trek writers and black folks' hair. I don't know. Um, well, see, it's funny because you and I are completely separate on this, but keep going, <laughs> keep going. Yeah, but um, that, that was the thing. Like, I saw seeds of greatness with Star Trek Discovery, um, even though it had a terrible name because it was named after, in my opinion, the most uninteresting movie of the movie franchise oh you know dang I, I bro i'm i'm idris elba i'm all in on i just can't stay awake for that movie mm. and and i i watched into darkness twice and i just have not been able to finish discovery one time and i'm just like i, I don't know what's wrong with me or the thing there's just something about it that don't resonate but um but the discovery series for its first couple of seasons i'm like what is this show trying to be you feel me because mm -hmm. you had ds9 which was casablanca in space at a time of war and i loved it next generation is hey star trek is back y'all this is where we're going now that the original series cast is getting up there in years okay um voyager was an exploration of a part of space that we ain't never been before and the concept of working together with people that aren't in starfleet to at least try and get home so it had that quantum leap thing about it okay you know um and of course we had enterprise the show nobody talks about showing um showing where the federation came from what humans were considered to be by other species is you know but what was discovery you know what what was that i don't uh we we it was hard for me to find its footing, you know? It was okay, cool okay. being interested in Michael Burnham, but I couldn't find a plot, or not a plot, but a motif. A motif or a theme. Okay, okay. Now, I can All see right. where you go, because I never, I never really looked at Star Trek in that way, but I've never been as hardcore into Star Trek as, say, like, my mother was. Right, right. So when I saw when I saw Discovery, I was just like, yo, this is crazy. Like they it, at least from the action standpoint and also from it looked like, oh, OK, oh, so so Paramount is actually putting money into this like this. This they're not cheaping out on this show. Yeah. Oh, OK. It, well, 
because because you know they sometimes own. studios will you know they'll give you you know ten dollars until you bring <laughs> the change back oh yeah yeah we're looking at you bloom house uh, <laughs> but uh now again since i think it was season three of star trek the next generation paramount knew where its money is supposed to go ah uh, okay you know serious because think about it ever since the next generation when has paramount actually cut the budget to a star trek property yeah usually star trek I'll, I'll give you that usually star trek looks good yeah it was just it's it had been if a while nothing since else from had paramount been star the, trek is gonna look good <laughs> yeah it had been a while since we had been in the i guess the i don't know what uh the the community calls it because of course i i'm not gonna act like i know everything but the the i guess the the solid canonical original timeline stuff because we did the uh jj abrams films yeah the that, kelvin timeline yeah which i wasn't super mad at but i know people hate them so you know i i understand but people were just being loud I, i'll tell you the truth <laughs> the only thing about the kelvin timeline that most i'm talking the majority of star trek fans didn't like to my knowledge is that it sped up things too much you know we oh, okay. introduced khan and have the wrath of khan in the same adventure where space seed was important you know and it okay. skipped over space seed went straight to the wrath of khan and it was asking that question which is really honestly something i see where you know i think you and I have a great juxtaposition on it. Um, because Star Trek fans are fascinating. Um, I don't want to get political and stuff like that, but well, I mean, the show is political, so we, yeah, it's, it's okay, it's true. All right, so, um, I notice a lot of right leaning folks look at Star Trek or look at Starfleet specifically as a military organization, they're focused on war, they're mm -hmm. working, they're focused on war and left-wing folks are like oh let's talk about meet new species communicate exchanging ideas you see what i mean mm -hmm. where starfleet has both acts both aspects in themselves but there seems to be this debate on which one it is mostly you know is okay. it mostly military is it mostly exploratory you know and that exploratory that brings in the uh the diplomacy and politics versus you know wartime and what i'm seeing so far about season five see i'm getting around to that it's almost like i did my homework <laughs> is it's taking that that head on it, it is taking that theme and motif straight on in its last three seasons and yeah, definitely I especially am, with kind of like trying to rebuild the, the federation yeah and you know we we talked about it at the finale but discovery season four was everything i wanted from star trek okay when they spoilers for something that happened almost a year and a half ago <laughs> um when they discovered the new quadrant went into the other universe had to decipher the language of the new species and make first contact yeah that was my star trek you feel you feel me mm -hmm. and you got people going no we got to take weapons and it's like whoa they've already come here and if they can come here and turn off all of our stuff it'll be like a five-year-old trying to look up on a 40-year-old man 40-year-old construction worker <laughs> you know that that that's not gonna go well i mean it, i understand wanting to take weapons because maybe you know maybe you can at least defend yourself or hold yourself off long enough to just get away but you know all of the in season four all of the signs were pointing to they're not hunting us you know what i mean yeah like, they just doesn't don't whatever this us. is it's not really <laughs> hunting us it's not coming whatever this is it's, it's kind of just happening yeah it, it it doesn't notice us and that that's cosmic horror on some level yeah. you know it's it don't even realize we are here <laughs> like we're not even i mean it's like it's kind of like when godzilla is, hmm? godzilla is essentially protecting us but also to protect us destroys the city of like 10 million people so it's kind of good i kind of look like, at it it's like, like we 
Yay! Uh, I, <laughs> well, I look at it like, um, you know, a lot of people are like, oh, we're just ants to them. I don't like to think about it like that. I think about it like, do you actually stop to consider what the grass feels when you're at the park? Yeah. <laughs> you know? And, um, and they brought up those questions and got back into the morality play of everything. And now, um, so I guess we're going to get into the episode, um, or the episodes. Yeah. Yeah. Now, number one, I oh, well, started hold by up. shaking before, my head. Yeah. Before we, before we get into the episodes, I want to say something that I've been, that's been eating me since we started this season. Uh oh. I want to talk about Gray and Adira. I was literally about to not even think about those two, but all right, let's go there. Let's go all the way there. Last Talk season. Last season. I spent. No, sorry. Season three, I believe. I spent the whole season saying, look, y'all need to either get together or break up because I'm tired of this back and forth mess. I am tired of it. And I even say, Adira, just find you a new boo. All right. Because I'm tired of this. I'm tired. Of, it's, it, I'm tired of going back and forth. Are you going to be together? Are you not going to be together? Just be, just be one of those things. But I'm tired of going back and forth because then you can have the relationship that's really important, which is kind of like the surrogate father relationship you have with Stamets, which is is cool. The thing with Gray, I don't. It, if y'all are together, great. If y'all are together, great. But I don't really care about y'all going. And what do y'all do this season? This, the second she said. We was like, uh, with uh, uh, I've been on my ha- own, and I we, ha- yeah, like we haven't seen each other in months. I was like, oh no, don't do it, don't do it. And then when we talked to Gray, uh, Gray says, uh, what is it, um, something like, uh, you know, we maybe we should break up. I said, man, look, okay, unless <laughs> when he started that conversation, I was like, unless y'all say y'all are about to get married, I do not care what happens next. I want either y'all to get married and go off into the sunset or break up and never talk again because y'all getting on my nerves. So <laughs> did did the did the two people in your group of friends that are on again, off again, and you're tired of it? <laughs> so this is an interesting <laughs> thing for me because I hear everything you're saying and the the video ain't on because it's just for the audio people, but I am smiling like a grandfather right now. <laughs> Um, and I'm with you 75% of the way. Okay, okay. What, um, because what I hear from you right now, my friend, is the life experience of a grown-ass man. (laughs) Forgetting that he's talking about teenagers. That on again, off again, all that stuff, like... You are a grown man in the sense of you have had life experience. You've gone through relationships and you have been happily married for as long as I have known you. It's just that I've been there and I know it don't lead nowhere. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. But they don't. And when you were there. Where is Stamets? You know, and when you were there, when you found out it don't go nowhere, did you find out from watching other people or did you find out on um, through your own experiences? But it would have been nice to have an older gentleman to be like, be that girl alone. Yeah, we had that. That was Reno. (laughs) (laughs) That was straight up Reno. Because that is my engineer's role in this whole show. Man, Reno is the bomb. (laughs) Reno's like, oh, you have a talk with you have a talk with the deer yet? No, I don't know. What's going on with them? God, you're stupid. (laughs) I'm gonna go have a snack now. I'm like, man, yeah. But um but given the fact that they are teenagers and they're going through this the first time i loved the writing on that break up my boy i loved it (laughs) loved it loved it so much no lie i reached out to one of my exes really i seriously did just to see how she was doing just to be like you know i was just thinking about us and she was like you know what we were good together i'm like yeah we were good to each other you know because those two in that writing 
went through what a breakup should be. Mm, the realization okay. that we are growing apart. The let's talk about this. Okay, we're talking about this, and no, there is no solution. Okay. And it wasn't a let's stay friends out of idealism or let's stay friends because I'm trying to either keep you from getting hurt or I'm trying not to feel like a jerk. It was, no, I, uh, I'm your friend first. But yeah, so I'm, I'm hurting. I can see you hurting. So uh, let's go lick our wounds. And I hope they're not visited. Like this subject is not visited for at least another two episodes. Because yeah. when you see breakups on TV, they come in two flavors. Uh-oh. I shall sacrifice our relationship because you shall be better without me. <laughs> or the big explosive breakup over something stupid that one of them assumes the other one did. Oh, yeah. I forgot. Kind of like the rom-com kind of breakup. Uh -huh, yeah. Like, and then, of course, wait, they end whose up socks are those you wearing? You didn't go to Target. Later. Yeah, the, you didn't tell me you went to Target. You never tell me you don't respect me. Bah! You know, that kind of thing. And um, But this one was just like, our lives are going in different directions. And what we're doing don't work in the way that we're trying to make it work. Well, damn. Um, okay, okay, okay. Um, yeah. You know, so, so I, I, I love that. I, and we I, got we got more with that, but go ahead. I, I know you were you were about to say you were pulling out your hair, and I think huh? you have other stuff going on. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I, I I was good about that, but God, what was the thing that I want the part about this? Um, that was um. See, we got on this Adira thing. I totally forgot my point. Let me check my notes real quick. <laughs> uh, oh, I'm sorry. They, they were killing me on this show. Because yeah. I finally thought we were in a good place. And I was like, hold up. We're here again? Yeah, and we're here to end it. <laughs> oh, yeah. That military or exploration thing. All right? Mm -hmm. That that are we, are we in war or are we, uh, like, you know, is Star, is Star, what is Starfleet? You know, what is it at its core? And mm -hmm. the juxtaposition between Rainer and Michael was great. You know, because Rainer went in there um, with straight up, I'm here for combat. I'm about the mission. I don't know you. I don't care. Like, you work for me. You are a rank. Get in your spot and do as you are told. And then you got Michael going yeah but see i know my crew yeah you know um, and i guess to give rainer uh, he about to get on my nerves but to give rainer a little bit of love michael's journey with her crew was most not most likely not his journey with his crew so michael's journey with her crew was more like a group of like-minded individuals friends sort of kind of going to the other another dimension coming back fighting along with getting pushed to the future they were all kind of side by side shoulder to shoulder hand in hand facing this this battle <laughs> together yeah he seems like he don't do that <laughs> but at the same time i'm glad tilly you know Tilly told him what she needed to tell because I was like look I was like hold on Tilly I even paused it before she went off there was a scene before it and I, I was like hold on Tilly Tilly I'm gonna need you to reach back to that that alternate dimension version where you had to be <laughs> evil all right because it, I'm glad she was like let's not forget you were on a forced demotion I was like I paused it I was like no forced retirement let's, let's go on and say it forced retirement you were saved by Michael. And for someone who loves order so much, what about the order you were given to do it this way, not the way you want to do it? Oh, so now orders don't matter no more? <laughs> so, so yeah, I was glad till he stood up. Cause I was like, look, she told you, cause I would have been like, look, you need to go see these people. He would have been like, I don't want to see, I would have been like, fine, that's cool. I'm going to go tell the captain what you told me because one thing I ain't going to be is insubordinate. You can be all the insubordinate you want to be. See, I'm going to be subordinate. All right? Because I ain't getting in trouble. See, you're going to get in trouble. <laughs> I'm going to say, Mitch. Michael, I told him this. 
he said i ain't gonna do this now would i snitch on detmer would i snitch on a woshiku no but see you <laughs> ain't part of our crew you ain't you ain't done you ain't put five on it yet so first we don't even like you in the first place and then you come in here like we gotta come and kiss the ring you done lost your mind but Man. i digress i digress i ain't gonna sorry lie. <laughs> Again, you know I live in my childhood home, so all I'm thinking is the park across the street from my house. And <laughs> you sound like my old boy Michael going, Man, you just moved here. <laughs> like, we don't know you. You only playing with us because your mama won't let you into the house. <laughs> so So yeah, that that that's all. No, this ain't your game. You you wait your turn for a pickup game like everybody else. You know? get on the court. Now, I don't care if you varsity back in your high school. You just moved to this block, fool. You know, that that's what I'm <laughs> hearing. <laughs> you know, but um, now, narratively speaking, because you know how I am about story structure and stuff like that. He fills the niche that Saru used to fill. Okay. Yeah, but Saru has grown so much now. Exactly why they need another one. Yeah. All right. Because before like Saru, the team there was being, uh, well, look uh, at it. Before team. Saru, there was the doctor. Before the doctor, there are sorry. Before Saru, there was to Paul. Before to Paul, there was the doctor. I'm talking in show, yeah, um, in show production. Before um, to Paul, there was Odo. Or um, before Odo, there was oh, yeah, Data. Odo was a hater. And it all goes back to Spock. It all goes back to the alien character that has to learn how to be human. And the Discovery crew being, let's face it, the clinically insane crew of mad scientists. They're not clinically insane. The Discovery crew is amazing. They are great. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You are, com you are adding judgment to a statement that I don't have. Okay. <laughs> they are amazing. They are also insane. <laughs> it is a ship full of mad scientists. That's what it always has been. I mean, are they? Yes, absolutely yes. Hey, let me use some fungus to give us teleportation through time. Why not? That right there is the ship of Starfleet in its time. Um, you know, pre Kirk, um, mid Archer, uh, or not mid Archer. Um, you know, um, straight up going. All right, we got to put these people somewhere because. If they're, I mean, Starfleet's already full of mad geniuses, but these guys are a different level. So let's put these fringe scientists in one spot and send it over there. Mm. You know, so you've got a team of insane mad scientists with a sentient ship. Let's not forget the ship is alive. Yeah, we love <laughs> her. And they are really good at teaching everybody how to be human that that's like they're special they are so good at teaching people how are teaching aliens how to be human beings that they got a vulcan to propose to one of the members of their crew and the ship came alive i mean so... i mean that's that's because they're great <laughs> huh that's because they're great yeah that's because they are amazing they're the best they are at what they do but what they do ain't always pretty okay <laughs> <laughs> And same people don't come up with the ideas that the Discovery crew comes up with. And I love them for it. Again, insane is not bad, but it's still insane. Uh, <laughs> you know, it can be a little dangerous. Still crazy. Um, and so, you know, they went all the way through Mr. Saru from mousy little alien who swings his arms behind his back to action Saru with projectile weapons oh, coming yeah. out of his face. Action Saru. <laughs> you know, we love action Saru to Saru hooked up with, you know, an attractive woman who doesn't suppress her feelings and who happens to be the president of her planet. <laughs> and, uh, you know, he's like, hey, thanks for making me human. Now I'm going to go out and get a life for my own. Yay, I got my own life. And then we got Captain Rainer, who is, he reminds me of Captain Holt from Brooklyn Nine-Nine. <laughs> wow. I think, you think know about what? It. <laughs> You're seeing it. 
<laughs> I, I'm seeing Captain the awakening, so and I'm not even better. looking at you. Like, huh? he's, Captain Holt is so much better. He's like, at least, I don't know. I like him. Oh, Captain but, Holt is my favorite character from that show. But Captain I mean, Holt Rainer, seasons one and two, just like Rainer, but less outwardly angry. Mm, Amazing yeah. at his job. But he don't care about you. <laughs> you don't care about you work here. That's it. You are a co-worker. This is not family. We are not friends. I am the captain. You are the crew. Do your yeah. job. And see, you that's know? the next thing. Rainer is not captain no more. All right. You're not captain no more. Yep. You are the number one, which means look, you gotta follow orders like the rest of us, all right? You you ain't captain and you too trigger happy. I, you, you seem trigger happy for me. <laughs> now, two okay, all right. I guess I will. I'll Rainer, we were given a red directive, all right, by the by the section 31 chief, the super secret guy, the the Star Trek CIA, you know, so yeah, we dollar were store given Ted Danson, yeah. <laughs> so we were given a red directive. And like he said, I think he said he had already done seven red directives or something before or something like that. Seven or uh -huh. ten. So, so he knows that red directive means by any means necessary, get it done. I don't care what happens. Go do it. Yeah. Casualties are acceptable. Yes. So I do understand that. But he didn't try to think of any other way but just blowing up uh, we'll see. an explosive i was like bruh why don't y'all just keep them down here or tell one of your your big ships up there to like release a couple tie fighters or whatever the little the little shuttle ships y'all got and then you they know? can keep keep tabs on them and then everybody can be safe nah mr trigger man over here well that's the thing bruh if he was thinking about that why would we need captain burnham True, why would we need true, her yeah. in that story and yeah you're right you gotta have you gotta have a a crazy opposite for her you know not to mention all right and i've known a few people in my time and um that was his seventh red direction red director number seven all right now you've been in one of my rpgs mm -hmm. how many times did you personally see in my rpg members of your party taking the path of least resistance doing what was most logical even though it could have cost everybody their lives and that's just in a game <laughs> you know yeah i mean if i recall when we were doing um when we were doing Esper Genesis, you were the one going, guys, we are a team. <laughs> we don't leave nobody behind. We don't do all that stuff. We are all together. <laughs> you know, they were, like, talk right they were like, no, we not. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. All right. And if you were the captain of a crew on your seventh mission, whose subtitle is you have both permission and forgiveness so get it done um then goes on that with it with an actual team for the first time their their first time having both permission and forgiveness and normally they just go for forgiveness <laughs> they're like we gonna break the rules but we gonna save the galaxy okay but you gonna forgive us after we're done but it was never in a way of let a planet die you feel yeah. me but this was his seventh mission where destroying half a civilization that's acceptable here's your next job you know not even a slap on the wrist so we kind of got used to thinking in that way and people who have jobs like look, think about think about bill collectors and the people that call you you know, when they automatically try and treat you like you got the money and you're just not paying them out of spite. And you're like, look, I'm broke. And they're like, yeah, you know, I understand that you don't have any money right now. So let's set up a payment system. Can you give us? No, I can't give you nothing. I don't have nothing, man. You know, 
And the people on the other side of the phone, when they're new, they go, oh, you don't have nothing. All right. All right. I feel you. I feel you. So let me call you back in a couple of weeks after payday. Maybe you can put something aside for us. But after about a month at that job, you're like, "Uh uh-huh, you got nothing. So you are going to write us a check for $600. (laughs) Because I have been on both sides of that phone call. I'm glad I've never had to be when I was when I was in my cubicle, I was just working uh, pretty much just repair service for Comcast Xfinity. That, that was pretty much it. Yes. Yeah, oh, your yeah, internet was, service doesn't work. All right. Let me log into your modem. All right. Oh, all right. Yeah. See, that was I was in landscape supply. It's like, all right, turn it off. I'm going to sense I'm going to do some <laughs> stuff over here. All right, now I'm going to send this signal. Now plug it in so I can send the signal. I'm restarting your internet from the beginning. Yeah, see, you were the guy that you were Michael Burnham. All right, and I was Michael Burnham. But when I was in landscape supply, one of the reasons I quit is I found out. Homeowners note, all right, if y'all out there, I know, I know not a lot of people are going to be buying homes because the economy is trash. God bless America. Please, please bless them. Please. I don't even follow you, and I'm asking you on their behalf. Um... <laughs> If a construction worker works on a home, but doesn't pay, like when the construction worker buys the cement and the bricks and the materials and all that stuff to work on your home, like your roofer, Mm -hmm. if they buy that on credit and they don't pay their credit card bill, the supplier of those materials can take your house. Whoa, hold up. What? Yeah, seriously. They say because they can't take the materials back and the materials increase the value of your home. Wow. And see that reaction that you had right there. That was what I had. And I was the dude on the phone going, look, your people didn't pay us. So if you don't pay us, we're taking your house. Wow. And I'm sitting up going, how does that even work with like banks and stuff? You can't just, I assume there's like tons of red tape there. Um, not as not as much as getting those people off you but yeah i mean that but that's actual fact and my co-workers my managers were like Psh, if you're gonna get work on your house you have to vet your construction worker if you don't know that you deserve to lose your house i'm like were you born uh, a monster you deserve, did you have you a childhood to lose your house I told you wow. worst job i ever had all right i lasted there long enough to get them on a hostile work um hostile work environment suit but yeah, so, you know, again, a lot of homeowners didn't know this. And I'm with the company going, yeah, so you owe us $10,000 or we're going to take your house because we cannot take your new pool. Like, we can't repossess your pool. Can't go to your house, dig uh, it up, and take it back and then resell the materials. Yeah, I got, yeah. And I'm like, it makes sense. But homeowners need to know this, and that wasn't taught in any classes I took in college. But then again, I didn't take finance law, you know. And, and then un- that was unfortunately, that was, yeah, that gives credence to those people that be like, "You don't own anything in America," and it's like, ah, man, you're not help, you're not, you're not helping us, uh, helping us, um, with this, with this argument against them because, uh. <laughs> really making it look like uh really make it look like we don't own anything yeah but um well no you can own it it's just there's a lot of ways to legally jack you but um yeah. but see that was captain rayner captain rayner was like you should have looked into your construction company <laughs> now you got 40 days to move you know that Dang. that's what his job was and you and i are sitting up going no 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 our first priority is to make sure that this working family don't end up on the street crash the ship <laughs> you know that that's seriously what it was wow but yeah that that now seeing rainer like that i mean i understand i'm not against rainer because I mean, he did come in handy when he was like, "Hey, I've been listening to y'all calls. I need to do this and this." So, you know, I get it. I even understand Rainer's position at the little light inquiry mm-hmm. because, in all honesty, I've been in a meeting. Now, I've of course I wasn't you know almost in trouble for 
her, like <laughs> collapsing a mountain on top of a small city or a village or something. <laughs> but I've been with one of those meetings where it's me and like two other people. And basically the meeting is just, you know, we, we want to throw our weight around a little bit. Yeah. Like y'all have been doing all the work, but you know, we, we sneezed. So now we got to yell at somebody. Well, I call that a, a Napoleonic meeting <laughs> where you're already in trouble when they call you in. Now yeah. you got to convince them how what you did was the right thing. And you know? Rainer, everything he said, I was actually, I was like, you know what? This is what y'all told us to do. Y'all sent the CIA man. He told <laughs> right? us. He t- <laughs> this was, they're like, you know what? He's, uh, he's like the, the, uh, smoking man on X-Files. He's, you know, he's the guy, he's yep. like the secret guy. You don't really know who Actually, he works for. He, who he, he's, who he, he reports to. He's, he's one step there. down. He, he's one step down. Cause you know, um, target brand Ted Danson is the smoking guy. Mm, not target. Brand. <laughs> you know, <laughs> but it's like, you know what these red directives are. And if you're going to say that red directives, we don't care what the, you know, what the fallout is, then you can't make a meeting about caring about what the fallout is. (laughs) Thank you. So I I was with him on that. Now I was the same way in my meeting and I I said it with my chest and I did not get fired, Mm -hmm. but I was surprised. (laughs) because <laughs> i even i even sent a text me- i remember that day i sent a text message to my boy i was like man i'm probably getting fired today but i let them know i let them know i don't play and i ain't no punk <laughs> oh man yeah the things you can do when you don't have a family <laughs> yeah i ain't your pu- i ain't no punk makes no sense where people gotta eat all right <laughs> Yeah, guess what? I got fired. I don't know where the next check coming from, but guess what, baby? I ain't no (laughs) She ain't trying to hear that. Yeah, because you know (laughs) your mortgage company doesn't go. We admire your integrity anymore. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. That grumbling stomach is like integrity. You know. But I I get him. And Hmm? I, I did side with him on that. But he also has a one track mind of like his way is the only way to complete the mission. Yeah. Without even being like, you know what? All right, let's try it that way. Like he's just like, no, my way is the only way. And it's like, you know, you were put together to team up on this, even though I thought that was a bad idea from the start. But when uh, <laughs> the Admiral, when the Admiral did it, I was like, I don't know. No, I, again, looking at it from, looking at it from an executive's point of view, I'm with the Admiral because you know what I saw when I looked at that team up right there. All right. We did you dirty. Number one. Okay. Number two. We messed you up. (laughs) We literally changed the way or we picked you because you're a little bit of a sociopath and you need to heal. Wow. (laughs) So... You should be first officer on the ship. That's so good at teaching people how to be human that the sh- that the, the car came alive. <laughs> they they're so good at teaching people how to be human. The ship became human. You you need to go serve on that ship for a while. And the the ship becoming human is what saved the past, which is why we he- like man. Look. Yeah, exactly. Look. <laughs> exactly. Th- that's why yeah. discovery should be like look just do what we say man we've saved the world like how many times now no we saved like existence in all fairness in all fairness every single vehicle featured in a star trek show can say that Dang. every well, okay. single one <laughs> the enterprise can say it the voyager can say it the deep space nine station can say it but they ain't here right now right now it's just us we in the future we we did it all right yeah, we I, came I, to the future y'all I'm, won't federation won't even doing nothing we came <laughs> in here we saved y'all like, yeah I, again I'm, I'm i'm with you and they had enough credibility to be like nah don't make them retire <laughs> <laughs> you know i'll take them 
You'll take him? I'll, I'll take, I'll take him. him. I'll take him. Like, I'm not a pushover. I'm counting on that. <laughs> and I don't know. I guess, like I said, when I first talked to you off um off recording, I was a little uh at episode one because when I said that he had them Captain Jericho vibes, I'm not I, I wasn't lying. And I still stick by that. Thing was though, Captain Jericho was a good captain. <laughs> he wasn't Picard. <laughs> He wasn't what we wanted, but he was good at what he did. Okay, okay. You know, he didn't do it the style we had gotten used to by season four when Picard was counting when Picard was counting lights, but he did the job. (laughs) You know, true, true. And he did it well. He was a very good captain. Um, it it's. I don't know. I guess because I watched Mash to- Mash a lot growing up. Ah, uh, okay. And that was when we went from Colonel Blake to Colonel Potter. <laughs> Where so, Colonel it, Colonel Blake so, was just you know he was a pushover. We kind of got used to him. He had a sense of humor. Then Colonel Potter came in there and he's like, "I'm here to keep y'all alive." <laughs> like I, so, I don't care about your antics. <laughs> you know. I don't care about your antics. Oh. <laughs> uh, Oh, I did want to. I wanted to know your thoughts on um, Tarina, Tarina and Saru, because that's where I was gonna. Oh, Tarina and Saru, I'm down. Yeah. I'm down. I really, really like that. Although the actress is directed in a way that I'm not used to seeing Vulcans. Hmm. Well, maybe it's because you know. I mean, she is the president, so I mean. Oh, well, it's just you know. All right, let me put on my geek hat here. Oh my god, my Elizabeth coming back. Uh-oh. Uh Well, canonically, it's not that Vulcans don't have emotions. Actually, they suppress them, which is why they tend to go a little crazy every seven or eight years, you know. And um, now I'm getting used to it because I'm like, you know what? This is a thousand years in the future. Vulcan yep. and Romulus have evolved. They have done something different. And now and they're so, on Navar. Yeah, exactly. They are on Navar. They are not on Vulcan. Vulcan is gone. <laughs> Vulcan gone. Um, and so now the Vulcans are showing a little more emotion. And I'm like, okay, all right. A little something to get used to, but not bad. Um, and I dig it. I dig, I dig their whole thing. I've dug their whole thing ever since it was starting. Okay, I wanna I wanna ask you about the the conversation with uh is it Duvin when Duvin oh, comes yeah. to all right so I knew this because when when uh she was talking to Saru about the announcement and yeah. when I saw Duvin's face I was like ah oh, here it come uh-huh. and Lisa was sitting <laughs> with me Lisa was sitting with me I was, she was like what what's up I was like he ain't Vulcan. I was like, I already know. We, I was like, you ain't gotta say nothing. He ain't Vulcan, and he might, he might actually have a point. Now, with this, with the second he calls Saru to talk, and once he said Vulcan purist, I was like, oh, here we go. Uh-huh. I knew it. And I was about to say, I got five bucks on him being a representative of the purists. If he's not, because she, because Tarina did say she hired him, you know, she brought him on to be a shrewd political, you know, mm-hmm. uh, advisor or whatever. And I understand her statement of her saying, like, you know, I know how to make, you know, decisions for me or whatever. And I'm like, I get that. But you also the president. So maybe you can't always make decisions for you because we don't know. Now, I don't know how crazy these Vulcan purists is. Like, Will these Vulcan purists blow oh. something up? Like no, I don't, that, that I don't know. Established, and I think it was season three. Oh, okay, okay, they're willing to go into civil war, or at least a civil political war. And mm-hmm. from a writing point of view, I see that very much as old Republicans talking to MAGA people. Mm-hmm. And uh, I'm serious. I'm dead. Ser- I'm talking about the Romneys versus the Trumps. All right. And um, and I'm kind of with you on that, but I'm on the point of she's the president. 
she's already thought about this. Yeah. And but, coming from a history of dealing with manipulators, gaslighters, and emotional abuse people, the moment he took Saru aside to talk in private, I'm like, here it comes. Here it comes. He's about to do his dirt because why isn't he talking to both of them? Yeah, because she said he already came to me. I was uh -huh. like, so what you did, you asked mama for candy and she mm -hmm. said no. So you waited about an hour and then went and asked daddy for candy. Actually, you asked daddy for candy. Then you pulled mom aside and quietly and quietly said, daddy already said, yeah, if you say yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, but quietly aside in private so that daddy can't be like, that's not what I said. You know, you, 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 you feel me? Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, I see that. I, I, I'm like, up. Oh, I'm looking at that. I'm like, ooh, why am I getting my families around vibes? You know? The, the, the back of the neck chills that I get when my phone rings and I see it's it's a blood relative. Um, so yeah, that that's that's what I saw. But I'm like, okay. Um I kinda like the way their argument went. Where she was like, All right, I'm gonna need a minute. I'm gonna go to work. And then he came back later and he was like, you know, I was thinking about it and I realized that you are an adult and you're a politician and you've probably already thought about this stuff but here's the thing this is my first argument i don't know what i'm doing <laughs> like yeah, and i know manipulation when we're sitting at the table and i'm being a diplomat but i didn't know that that was going to spill over in the tgi fridays <laughs> and she's like it's cool <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I understand I understand Saru's point and where he's coming from and I get where I get where Tarina is coming from. My only I guess my only statement to Tarina after what she said is I know how you feel. I know you've thought about this, but if they do strike out and for whatever reason they're like hey we hate that you're with saru and they blow something up are you willing to take that on you know mentally emotionally psychologically or whatever because you said i'm grown i'm gonna do what i want to do mm -hmm. not saying that i don't want to marry you maybe not even saying that we shouldn't get married but also knowing that this is i mean y'all know the purest i don't but i mean this could be a very real possibility mm -hmm. or even more threats on your or my life or you know them threatening people of your family like we this isn't you know we're not like some you know fancy free wild teenage you know love that has no obligations uh-huh you know so it, it, i mean i get where she's coming from she's like look i'm a president i thought about this but i'm like there's a whole lot of people that said they thought about this in star trek or star trek like shows and then something blows up and they're like oh i didn't think about that so, uh, I get I get you on that and I have to counter it with all right. look at the motif of this storyline okay the number one thing that this storyline at least these first three episodes revolved around as a subtextual thing was what healthy relationships look like okay when we had okay. book and Michael finally talking and they're both going, man, I should have called. Yeah, so what well, we going I don't know, but we're going to have to work together every once in a while. We got to work this out. All right, cool. They're going to get back together. That's, of that's course, they're going to get back together. We that's already know. All right, they're getting you back know, together. The show's going to end with their happily ever at. Let, <laughs> let's, just, let's just call that a day. But we've also got the breakup. You know, we got Tilly and Rainer hitting us over the head with there is a difference between knowing and bonding. <laughs> And then we've got we've got the two that we've been talking about, you know, because you've been married longer than I was. I've been divorced for over two decades, um, but you are in one of the most healthy marriages I have ever seen. So I'm oh, what? Well, well, thank you. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. I am. Uh, seriously, man. I look at you and Lady Lisa and I'm like, yo, relationship goals. Um, so I'm going to put this to you in that context. How many times have you had something or Lady Lisa had something and the other one of y'all had to be like, 
I know you probably thought about this, but I just had to say it. And I need you to help me be on the same page you are. And have yeah, you considered this thing that hits my on, head? Boy. Ooh, huh? Early on? Yeah. <laughs> especially early on. You mean like where those two are? Yeah, yeah. All right, I get you. <laughs> All right. And so then yeah, you got Duvin. See, another thing, we didn't have a Duvin in between us trying to manipulate. I don't know. You might have. But yeah, I might I think... have and just didn't know. <laughs> exactly. I exactly my point. And, you know, because again, I, I thought about y'all because, you know, I was watching it to prepare about this. And I could just see you going up to Lady Lisa and Lady Lisa going, man, that's just Shantae. <laughs> you already came Don't to worry. me with this she, mess. She, all, she always <laughs> messy. Don't worry about her. Yes, exactly. And that's what that conversation was. And that was and it was Saru going, this is my first time through this. I didn't know the Shantae's even existed. <laughs> and it's like, but now i know when shantae come to me i don't pay her no mind and when these complication hits when we behind on the mortgage when one of us gonna lose the job it's us it's not just you it's not just me it's gonna be us and he said that with the line if these complications hit i will be proud to face them by your side and that's what i'm talking about right there All that's right? action saru man that's what <laughs> seriously I'm talking about. That, that when place. he called him action saru i was like what <laughs> <laughs> seriously i'm like right. but see that was the whole theme of this uh of specifically episode three the theme was what healthy relationship looks like in the face of adversity mm -hmm. you know and um i'm just like oh man see the star trek i don't know who is in charge of star trek right now but between this lower decks strange new worlds do not fire this person and I'm mad that <laughs> Prodigy seems like it's done, but they also ended it in a way where it's fine where it is. Mm -hmm. So I'm just like, ah, it's gone, really? Yeah. Paramount's um, Star Trek game is finally almost as on point as LA's Mexican food. Um, you know, it's it better than it ever was. But yeah, so that that's that's what I was thinking. But the part that kind of stuck in my craw and I found it in my notes All right. Uh, was Locke and Maul mm, okay okay cause I'm like Star Trek you have always uh, I mean I realize all science fiction borrows from each other science fiction but we didn't need to hold my beer for Ahsoka mm. we really didn't I'm like, we already had Shin Batty on the other one. We don't need her here. And if you're saying hold my beer so you can do her right, nah, we don't need that. You're above that, Star Trek. <laughs> you know, you're, Man, you're above that. Lock him all. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not feeling them. I'm really not feeling them. I, at least so far. This is this is probably my biggest part of this season opener that. I don't know. Okay, because we, in my opinion, Star Trek Discovery opened with a bang. And I'm like, okay, we probably going to close with a bang. That's what I'm talking about. And Lock and Maul don't really seem like a big deal. Well, and maybe they're... maybe we don't have to end on a big deal. Maybe it's okay to just end with, all right, hey, we got the we got the very important like uh, progenitor uh, tech. Everything's fine. We love all y'all. Good night. You know that kind of thing. Uh, so no, <laughs> no, no, I, no, no, I, no, no, no. I mean, I I don't know, but I just no. know Lock and Maul. They don't really seem like a big deal. They opened on a big bang. Okay, um, the show did open on a big bang. Then it went for that weird Klingon spec ops. Michael Burnham's love triangle thing. I mean, I'm, I'm, I, I just put all that out of my head. <laughs> um, the thing that they're doing, I get it. They needed a bad guy, and I like the way that they're written. Is the thing, all right? I like the way that they're written. I like the MacGuffin that they're looking for. Okay, I really do dig this because this is setting up for the Star Trek theme, the Star Trek motif of. We kind of dropped the ball with Star Trek V. Let's really do this. Let's okay. really do this. Now that we got long form storytelling, let's really explore man's search 
for God and his place in the universe. And then, and, of course, with Stamets saying, like, all the things that they could, you know, yeah, learn and <laughs> do. Like, and, because, dude, of course, this... Rainer's like, that person, if it's in the wrong hands, and it's like, yeah, but what if it's in the right hand? If it's in the right hands, we can create life. We can like, design we can, life. We can for... save extinct species. We can protect people. We can, you know, do more than we've ever done. And I'm kind of going, yeah, that that should be hidden. <laughs> that should absolutely yeah, be I'm, hidden. I'm on. I'm on the fence. Stamets is right. In the right hands, this could be amazing. We could help so many. We could save so many. We could improve it. To, we could improve life for the whole universe so much so that essentially black markets and criminality and wrongdoing is almost at like something like two or three percent because most of that stuff is driven out of some sort of desperation and we can get yeah. rid of that but we could turn the whole galaxy into earth but if this thing get in the wrong hands and see all but, it or, takes or if someone is underhanded at the federation that we don't yet know about and nah man i don't know and see that that's where i cannot fault rainer it's almost like rainer watched every episode of the next generation because it's like uh-huh yeah that's good that's good but all it takes is one wrong hand yeah and i mean they have all that information you know because i mean the technology in star trek is already beyond all right <laughs> it's already beyond you know they turn matter into energy and back again for food matter of fact they yeah. turn energy into matter for amusement yeah yeah the holodeck technology is scary when you think about it All yeah because right? this is the, it's not like you're watching a movie like these no. are like you know you can like this is a like a horse-drawn carriage that you can get in like you can sit in it you can touch yeah. the horse like yeah, you can exactly you know this is real ish stuff i mean so, no well no it's just real it's not even real ish yeah the technology that they have so far is horrifying in its yeah. implication so to say oh yeah by the way we can craft reality and create a new species because you know <laughs> i mean just think about it because you know you yeah, know that, I, I that just, could get bad real, real quick <laughs> and all it takes is one just one you know all it takes is one peter weller from star trek in the darkness um one member from the delta quadrant <laughs> you know one breen one shapeshifter like odo saying you know i think i want to come back you know with that kind of technology i mean look at the gem hadar okay agent i mean star trek already has laws against genetic modification which is taking what's already there and yeah. tweaking it a little all right so what if we didn't have to tweak it what if we just designed it from the ground up <laughs> yeah because then that's technically not genetic modification because this is something that was just created today yeah and you know uh the whole genetic and modification how thing does this that's work? like yeah exactly because i that, mean is this a situation where i could build myself an army in an afternoon not an army an army of kalels an army of zod because why not you know you can build yourself an army of freaking watchers from marvel or you know that kind of technology is like dark side high father level stuff yeah it you know and all it takes is one person in the wrong mood that alone yeah one person in the wrong mood or one super scientist that's so excited about doing it that they forget to think about the implications and then where we at oh you mean jurassic park yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly exactly they're so busy thinking about why whether or not they could they never thought about whether or not they should <laughs> yeah because it's I, I, I won't front. I'd be in that mean like, oh, snap, we can make dinosaurs? That's dope. All right, well, hold up. Like, how big? Are they, like, original <laughs> big? <laughs> I'd be like, because 
even even in the most recent uh jurassic park movies where they where the girl uh, the stupid clone girl released the dinosaurs i was like well are we gonna see like the fallout from this because like even i guess you could consider quote safe dinosaurs how much foliage does a brontosaurus need to eat like um like times how, more than an elephant like how like aren't we talking about like global like yeah. ecological like destruct like yeah and what what kind of like changes or methane does just the the size of giant dino poop especially since it's multiple dinosaurs so, even if we're saying just the safe ones so if we're going on that scientific kick all right and i know this is one of the reasons that you call me on the show we're going on that scientific kick understand that every single technology that we have ever invented as the human race okay has always had a side effect that we didn't consider in the industrial revolution we started burning coal we didn't think about the implications of burning coal to the atmosphere or to our own lungs same with gasoline same with nuclear power same with NutraSweet. <laughs> um, <laughs> Not you know, NutraSweet. I'm, I'm serious. You know, same yeah, with yeah. high fructose corn syrup. There are so many things that we go, hey, this solves a problem for right now, but it kicks a different problem down the road. So when you're yeah, talking about creating... Nuclear when, power is extremely clean, super efficient, and awesome. Except but, for the waste. You, you yes. see what I mean? Once we use up that material, where are we going to put it? Yeah. You know, and if we put it on the moon, well, how much um, fuel are we going to have to burn to take it to the moon where it would be safe? That's and burning right. that fuel is going to cause clouds of uh, cause clouds of pollution. You see what you see what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> you know, So it's like, so, what are we going to do now with this stuff? Now, take that same history take that same level of intellectual maturity and apply it to creating life. I was able to create a creature that was genetically predisposed to being eaten and suicidal. Okay. So now there's no moral Im implications for eating meat. Unfortunately, I created a bacteria that turns people partly into oak trees and is resistant to antibiotics. You see what I mean? <laughs> yeah, I mean, because I mean, so, they, technically, imagine the amount of energy that's created by splitting the atom. We could probably solve a lot of power problems and energy consumption problems in an instant. But you know what you can also do? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Blow up a country and sterilize the survivors of the three surrounding countries. So, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know. I mean, that's the whole thing. Every technology have bo has both creative and destructive powers. And I think that is why the writers included um, First Officer Rayner. Because again, this crew, mad scientists. And even worse than mad scientists, they are mad scientists who are true believers in science. So they go, yeah. oh my God, I can do all of this stuff. Yes. And you by accident, now, you can do this. That. They don't really have a lot of skeptics on the crew. Exactly. You know what? <laughs> That's what makes the discovery like, so dangerous. Like, they don't have someone like me like, oh, okay, okay, cool, cool, cool. Hold, hold up real quick. Like, yeah. like, back to the Jurassic Park thing. Like, hold on. So how big, like original big dinosaurs or like, oh, we talking about like, you know, that kind of just for show dinosaurs like you know maybe the largest would be like yeah. giraffe size or yeah. we talking about like big big dinosaurs forget all the, i don't i don't care about the big big dinosaurs i care about the smart poisonous ones oh yeah <laughs> like and are we also, breeding we, ones that are dumb enough to stay in this cage that's what i want to know yeah <laughs> you see what when i mean we create those are we gonna unintentionally create like bacteria that they needed to survive can we can we fight off that bacteria or yeah is it gonna yeah you, you see what i'm talking about you know and i think the only the only series that did this right i think was planet of the apes i think that that actually showed the real implications 
and Discovery. And they got another one coming, actually. Cool. But yeah, the the Starship Discovery does not have a crew that does that. <laughs> but like back to back to the thing with Lock and Maul, I don't. May, and see, also they don't really know what they're going. They just know it's something impo- important, right? But well, I don't know. You see that they haven't Maul shown. is on the planet with yeah. uh, Adira and puts like I guess that's like a tracking yep. device or something on her. Um, how do you feel about Maul being semi-related to Book? The Book, um, necessary, absolutely necessary because um there's got to be personal stakes with what's going on always yeah. got to be personal stakes and again the overall plot of we're looking for the creation of the universe to find our purpose within it you know man's search for god and all that other stuff a direct mirror in theme and motif to star trek 5 the final frontier did it have to be spock's half brother how much did Sarek get around is my question. <laughs> Yo, Sarek was, Sarek, I mean, for people that ain't got no emotions, they show me, you know. <laughs> well, you know, that Pompar is stuff. real. Hey, you know what? Once every seven years. They didn't say one time every oh, seven okay. years. They said this period in seven years. <laughs> so it's like, I right, for about a month or two, I'm going to go wild, but don't worry about it. Hey, you know what? What do we do on shore leave? <laughs> i got three days you know <laughs> so um but yeah i mean they, they made it spock's brother in um in the final frontier so okay the, um since they're doing the man search for god and all that other stuff um it's necessary to you know it, it's it, it's like poetry it rhymes you know <laughs> like, um but beyond that um in order for there to be personal stakes from the bad guy and not just have it be a mustache trolling villain that's like i i was hurt when i was six years old now i'm going to destroy reality and recreate it in my image is a little bit of a jump yeah <laughs> especially you know. when they don't even know what they're really looking for exactly. right now well we don't know that they don't know Okay, true, true. We, we don't, we don't know that. They have, Again. they've at least gotten to, to Trill. So, and, and they've already made it very clear that she's aware of something, with the freight with, you know, um, Locke going. I don't know. Maybe we can take all this and steal his wallet. And she's like, "Do you want pebbles or the whole mountain?" I'm like, "Oh, she knows something." <laughs> yeah. So she, good. You know, good something. I'll get. I'll give you that one too. She, she may know more than she's letting on with that whole heist in general. Exactly. Um. So, what did you think of Data Mark Four? <laughs> Data Mark Four, really? The pawn shop owner. Yeah. Oh. Man. Well, that's what he he was a soon robot. You know, we got Data. We got Lore. Um. We got data's two daughters so let's call him data point three uh, three point five because data's two daughters looked human so oh yeah and i forgot the stuff I, yeah i forgot about the stuff that we learned in picard because i didn't come back after that second season ah okay <laughs> oh boy uh i it to me it was kind of nice seeing like oh okay okay so there, there's still a couple of them still around I was, I was like, that's nice. You know, like, I I wasn't mad at seeing, you know, a, a data-ish kind of, you know, machine or whatever. I thought it was actually, like, cool to see, oh, okay, so this technology, because, I mean, it's not as long as, I guess, you know, nothing detrimental happens to it. It'll just keep working. So, yeah. I mean, even, I'm pretty sure if someone takes care of it, you can, you know, pull out a Betamax and it'll it'll play the, play the movie. So, yes as long as you're not doing anything i mean electronics kind of just sit there so i mean as long as you don't do anything drastic most of the time it'll work just fine so now it was interesting the i guess the the line of work that that particular model went into but i mean hey i guess you know times change has been a thousand years in the future 
because you know i i kind of look at it like that and i'm like you know what a work is work <laughs> um and second if he is a soon robot he has probably read the history of everything that's happened to soon robots uh, and it's like you know what uh well think about it from our point of view all right now i know you went back to virginia but given the history of what happened to the soon robots that look like us would you move to mississippi no <laughs> or even though it's different because, it's different it's 21st century yeah but you but know <laughs> in in that in that type of argument a case could be made that the great migration didn't bring the prosperity we thought it would so maybe a move for everyone to come back i guess quote home to the south and concentrate political and financial power there would be the best play mm, I, I, just, could, I could i could maybe disagree. listen to an argument like that maybe i disagree because i've read the x-men <laughs> um and i don't want to go to genosha um yeah yeah I, I guess you got that too you know and second um it can be argued on that same front that nowhere in the history of humanity has ever brought travelers the riches and prosperity that they imagine on the trip mm, true true you know i mean people come from countries all over the place to america the land of opportunity and they get here and they settle on at least we're not being chased by the cartel yeah yeah i get you on that one you know so yeah i mean that that that's kind of a thing but at the same time there's also places that they know not to move yeah you know because even even coming back here and then a lot of a lot of cases i mean there's even studies that show most people end up moving back you know home or within some because since i i do a lot of work in the real uh real estate space there's studies that show like you know, most people end up moving back within 30 miles of their parents after yeah. a certain age. And it's basically because, you know, kind of like the same reason I'm back in VA, you know, grandparents ain't getting no younger. And, you know, you want those memories. You want, you know, yeah. you want them, those pictures and the memories and stuff. Or so in my case, also have that. wasn't anywhere else that was affordable to go. Oh, yeah, true. <laughs> that too. You know, and I mean, if you look at if you look at you know LA as opposed to here, yeah. I am paying the same amount that I paid for a one bedroom apartment, and here I am. I have a whole house with a front and backyard, mm -hmm. three bedrooms, two bathrooms, chilling. I mean, in fact, I'm I don't have two bathrooms, but I got three bedrooms, and I'm paying less than where you were. I'm paying yeah. less than you are, but. But, 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 but when I first moved back here, I'm like, man, I didn't want to move back here. And then I had to laugh going, who wants to move to the hood? <laughs> it is it's you know. one of those things. The hood, it, uh, this is tough. Now, guys, we're, we're, I know we're slightly off, but don't worry. The hood. I feel it, bad for you in editing. It's, oh, no, nah, I keep all this stuff. So <laughs> the hood is, it's a tough one because are you in the hood where it's just like, Yo, these are people that just go to work and come home. It's just that this is the part of town that the city is not going to put any resources in. Or is this the hood where dudes is on the block every day? Block, you know what I'm um, that, yes. <laughs> that, that is what South Central is. Yes. You know. Because, I mean, I know how the hood can be where it's like, this block is cool. Uh huh. You know, this is just working class folks, everybody chilling. And you go two blocks over and they hustling hard yeah you know so it's like when your kid want to go play outside it's like okay you can play here and only here because you know if they cut one block over they're going to be trying to recruit him you know to go you know yeah. take this package over there you know yeah, exactly so, and you know that that's the hood that i'm at that's that's the hood i grew up in again you've been to my house and yeah yeah it was you can play on this side of the park you can't go down there you go as far as the playground but you can't go past the playground 
can't go past the gym. You know, that's what A trays are. You know, so unfortunately, but that's know, a whole so, yeah. other. Um, and now it's mostly hardworking people, and I say mostly because you know, there's a dude on TikTok that actually does the places you don't want to go in the hood, and I'm like, oh yeah, no, I shop at that Seven Eleven. Yeah, I know that store. Yeah, he kind of write about that fish place. You know, that, that kind of thing. Wow. <laughs> um, I wish I knew his name. I'll send you a link next time he pops up. But um, but yeah, I mean, that that's just kind of the thing. So, you know, um, Data 3.5, you know, getting a job at a pawn shop far away from Earth, far away from the Federation. <laughs> After what they put his great great granddaddy through, I can see it. <laughs> It's, yeah, I because they I'm running haven't a pawn shop, always been too but, kind to synths. Yeah, because it's like, you know what? I'm running a pawn shop, but they ain't trying to cut me up to study my brain or telling me that I'm not a sapient being. Mm-hmm. So I'll take the pawn shop. <laughs> and then Make sure I, they're adolescent reptile, um, uh, adolescent reptile martial artist figures. But you know what? That's fine. Who needs a Ninja Turtle? <laughs> I was in that shop. I was looking at uh, Maul's face as opposed to Locke seemed kind of like, oh, you know, sort of whatever, whatever. But Maul kind of had a look on her face like, no, what we have, I don't know what we have, but what we have is way more valuable than whatever you're trying to give us. But then Data was like, well, data data four was like Fred. I'm gonna kill yeah. you anyway. Yeah, Fred. I I love that his name was Fred. <laughs> What's the name? I'm Fred. Good old okay. Fred. Yeah, Fred. Fred the pawn shop guy. I hope he comes back. <laughs> I mean, they. I guess they could sort of reactivate him. Yeah. Because I mean, I data's been Fred. reactivated before. You know. Because yeah, you know what? He he kind of reminds me of Kelix on that, but um. <laughs> But yeah, I'm like, okay, yeah, good old Fred. Um, what I got the look on her face was, we ain't here to sell it. I want to know what it is. I want to make uh, sure that I got the I got the thing that I wanted. Okay, okay. And by the way, uh, yeah, this it's like, oh no, 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 no. You see, the deal's been struck. You're not getting it back. No, you don't understand. <laughs> we are going to burn this whole place down because I don't want nobody knowing what we got. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, that that turned bad for Fred and his crew real fast. Honestly, I see that she had already made up her mind when she walked in. And that's the thing. I see a seed. I see a seed of an interesting antagonist. Um, cuz I like that they are as smart as both Ka- as both Rainer and Burnham and Book. Mm-hmm. So, they're smart, they're ruthless they're improvisational i should love them but i hate the makeup job <laughs> i'm just like is that is platinum blonde bowl cut just the language of bad woman now is that it mm. you know it, it is, it is it's not it's not the coolest hair but you know, you know i'm bowl cut bowl cut blonde with all the smoky eye you know it is a lot I'm of like, smoky eye i'm like is that just visual language for bad woman now i mean come on Come on, we can do better. We Either do she's better. a bad woman, like she's a bad guy, or she's a man eater. Like this. Yeah, exactly. She's like doing she's she's like purring and stuff and like showing you the claws. <laughs> oh you know, boy. Seriously. And I'm just <laughs> like, nah, son. Nah. Nah. Can we can I just if you're gonna make a female antagonist, can I see a female antagonist? that has a little variety you know because you brought up the whole man eater trope and it made me think of x97 and i'm like you know madeline Pryor is kind of kicking and stuff but um i'm surprised they they did give her like a little bit of her suit because i was like uh madeline Pryor. i don't know if you know but whoever originally drew her was definitely not making her for the kids she was wearing five do-rags and a cape <laughs> let's be real <laughs> So, so I, yeah. I was I was surprised on that, but I'll I guess we 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 talked a lot. So I'll throw it to you on a uh, final thoughts and where can they find you? Um, final thoughts. 
I am seeing them pull out a lot of stops with this season. This very much has the, this is our last season, so what they gonna do? <laughs> um, mindset. And I love it considering what they've always tried to say. Okay. You know, this has given me, and again, this is why I want the people at Paramount to stay there and never get fired. Um, they are leaning hard into Roddenberry's vision of what Starfleet was. You know, leaning real hard into it. We didn't get into that that second puzzle piece when they were fighting the invisible monsters. Oh yeah, yeah. That's yeah. that's a whole nother thing. Yeah, and let's just say I loved every second of it. Even the setup. <laughs> I love the setup. I love the why'd you tell us to take out our phasers? Mm, I had to see. <laughs> and couldn't you just tell us where it was? No. <laughs> because you're talking a good game, but I don't know if I can. I mean, you're saying everything that I need to hear in order to give you what you want. I need mm -hmm. to see your character. Got to see the kind of person you are. Because uh, this technology. Well, if we hadn't figured out, would you let us die? Yep. <laughs> he was like, for That's this information, yes. But hey, thanks for letting me have a body because, you know, I wanted to do some yoga. <laughs> you know, he was like, let's take a nice long walk. Well, that was all part of that setup, too. Yeah. And I've read enough fantasy novels to have known that that was the whole thing. Because if you notice, when he was laying on his back, after they got past the monsters and talked to him and all that stuff and reminded us that book is what Troy should have been. Um, mm. um, and he was just like, oh, no, here. <laughs> I skimmed. Like, he was kicking it right next to where he put it. And it was like, oh, yeah, you figured it out. Cool. Now I can give this to you. And now I can go to bed. And trust me, I was rooting for you because I'm tired. <laughs> He's like, take it easy, guys. You know, and um, I, I, I definitely, I definitely dug that. I de but again, that's that old man. That's that's true wizardry right there. Um. And it was, no, I'm testing your character. If you are warmongering, the answer is no. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't get a lightsaber. This ain't that franchise. <laughs> this is about the future that we want for everybody, not the future that we want for violent boys. Okay? <laughs> you know, and that ain't no shade at Star Trek. Okay? Wait, you can't, you I mean, can't, that ain't no shade at Star Wars. You mean you can't go to Tashi Station? Hmm? You can't? can't go to tashi station nope nope no nope. we want a <laughs> galaxy of moisture farmers who farm moisture because they want to and if you want to go be a pilot go be a pilot that's cool <laughs> you want to be an archaeologist be an archaeologist learn to play the flute that's cool <laughs> just there's no impact well i guess there are a couple of empires but right now nobody's fighting so we're kind of okay yeah exactly and it's like, and here's the technology that will make all of that possible for everybody everywhere. However, <laughs> it will also give someone the power to create a galactic empire. And uh, so I need to know. <laughs> I need to know, are you, y'all want everybody fed, clothed, health, educated, and happy? Or are you going to use this to make, sh to say, screw you got mine? Mm -hmm. I'm on, you know, I put this in the nest of these monsters that will eat you and shoot you and stab you and that you can't see. <laughs> okay. Oh, you can't beat them either. <laughs> yeah, it didn't seem like they were, didn't seem like they were at least easily beatable. No, well, not with what they had. <laughs> you know, not with what they had. They had phasers. And those phasers looked like they would have just made them more angry. Well, no, I mean, again, phasers turn matter into energy. The problem was they couldn't see him. <laughs> yeah. So it was like, throw down the gun, tell me you're sorry. I'm sorry. All right, cool. <laughs> so why'd you put that sketch there? Oh, because that's where I knew people would be coming to do the puzzle thing. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, that, that, that's cool. So couldn't you tell us where the rest of them are? You pass this one. There's no guarantee you're going to pass the other ones. <laughs> oh boy. You showed me that you're good enough. But not that you're good enough. 
<laughs> wow. So, you know, so you good enough. Thank you. I, I, I was rooting for you guys and I'm still rooting for you, but I'm going to bed, <laughs> you know. And um, so I really like that what it looks like from this series is it's leaning into the morality plays that Star Trek has always been. It's always been, you know, we can solve our stuff without violence. If we put away our guns and our violent tendencies, look at what we can learn from each other. Look at what we can achieve if we all work together. Mm -hmm. And it's really leaning into that. It's leaning into that heart. And I'm, I'm loving it so far. But it's not leaning into it in a smaltzy Spielbergian kind of way. It's <laughs> leaning into it with the, oh, we going to lean into this. But in leaning into this, we are not going to ignore the conversation. Which is why we have um, Duvin and Rainer and whoever else. Nope. You feel me? You know, it's leaning into morality is good, but we got to have a conversation about it, too. Instead of saying be good non-violent and open okay because the real conversation that star trek always put out there is yes it's hard but do it anyway true you know? true so th that's that's what's yeah. up with that yeah oh. I i'm i'm 100 in so cool. y'all can find me mondays wednesdays and fridays at twitch.tv slash bid underscore p or on YouTube under Solar Gray, or on YouTube under Bid P Blurred. <laughs> um, and I have a new channel where I teach how to play the bass guitar called Bass Blast 105. <laughs> ah. Cool. Uh, it's going slow because editing sucks. <laughs> and um, but yeah, and that's the channel where I literally teach how to play the bass guitar for fun from the beginning. <laughs> you know. Okay, that's what's up. Yeah, so yeah y'all can find me with all that stuff and of course you can reach out to me on all of the social medias under back in the deck that is back in the deck at gmail.com it's b-a-c-k-i-n-t-h-e-d-e-c-k -E -E at gmail.com all right so i am looking for i am glad to i've missed talking with you man i i really have man once once i knew uh star trek was back i was like okay we gotta do this uh, it's been too long. It's been I way too long. I wish you'd hit me up for X Men '97, but you were smart not to hit me up for Invincible. <laughs> Look, hey, X Men '97 is not done. We can still talk X Men. Should you let we've me got, know, man? We've got four, five, five episodes left. Yeah, you let me know because yeah, we'll out. Yeah, we'll 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 get together on that one. Yeah. So, guys, you hear you heard it here first. We will definitely be talking about X Men in some way, shape, or form. Um, but uh, final thoughts for me: I'm glad we're back. It's good to see everybody, even even though you know we're still dealing with some fallout of season four, which is of course understandable. But it's good to see everybody back. Um, it's even good to see Tilly back. I don't like her hair as much. But it's good to see Tilly back with the crew. I know she has to teach the kids. I was happy with her going on and doing her own thing. But, you know, this is the last mission. You know, this is, or at least the last mission that we'll see. They'll probably do other stuff. But, you know, this yeah. is the last mission. It's good to have her with the crew. And Saru stepping up, getting married and stuff. I, I like it. I do. I like it. I, I, I definitely like that we're getting closure. Yeah. <laughs> So now we just need to figure out what Locke and Maul are going to do. Because I think those are the parts. I think those are going to get a lot better. Because I think the reason why they set them up the way they do. Is because there's going to be some kind of huge reveal. Or a huge moment involving those two. Because right now they seem like two thieves that are kind of like in over their head. Mm -hmm. Kind of like um, kind of like um. Uh, what is the girl's name? Uh, uh, Peggy Carter from Mission Impossible. Okay. Kind of like that. Like in Mission Impossible, she steals this thing. She doesn't know. Now all of a sudden, there's car chases and you know, crashing trains and all kinds of stuff. But that's what he seemed like now. But we've you and I have noticed that it seems like Maul knows a little more than she's letting on. And Locke is kind of on for the ride. Um, well, Locke we'll is on for her. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's, you know, he's like, this is my boo, and I'm sticking with my boo. Exactly. So, 
Exactly. So we'll we'll see. But I'm I'm definitely still here. I'm gonna check this out. The, uh, Star Trek Discovery and Strange New Worlds, Prodigy, Lower Decks, love those. Picard didn't fully grab me, but you know those those four shows. I mean, there's still if you love Picard, there's tons of Star Trek out there for you. You know, so we hey, if you're a Star Trek fan, there is no reason for you to be upset. There's something out of those five shows you should like something. Hopefully, if you don't <laughs> like any of that, I look, I can't help you. Yeah, but, <laughs> Star Trek is very much like jazz. You know, <laughs> oh, you don't like that? What about this? All right, yeah, what about so- this? Oh, so I guess um N E R D S O U L Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, podcast, all that jazz. Until the next time that you have to use your spore drive to meet someone or to beat someone to the punch. We're just saying peace. Peace.